everybody, it's me, Man Alone. Welcome to the Man Alone uh, YouTube channel. And uh, thanks for being here. Shout out to all the truly weird people. Um, I, uh, I mean, uh, not, I'm not talking to the people who like try to be weird. You know, like a guy, guy named Toby who's like, oh, this, this tattoo? Yeah, it's Chinese symbol that means child of the sunflowers because my dad study he had a fulbright and it, no not you i'm talking about like the people who uh who put like all the toilet paper over the seat in a public bathroom like you make that little toilet paper nest before you sit on it or uh people who um who collect like uh calcified socks or bro break up with people because they don't like how they're back smells and uh, people who just randomly walk into w other people's wakes that they don't know just because they like the vibe. I'm talking to you, you absolute weirdo. You're my favorite kind of people, and this channel is for you. Um, and speak speaking of weirdos, uh, you can follow the uh, well, I guess not follow. You can join for $4 a month uh, my super secret podcast club on buymeacoffee.com forward slash man alone. Thank you to already the over 60 subscribers that we have. I mean, it pays for itself. The, the lawn care tips that I give in that podcast basically pay for themselves. Uh, we do a weekly podcast and uh, also put the audio version of these videos up there. Uh, it's not only Man Alone, it's Man Alone and Friends, and sometimes it's Man Alone and Alone, but uh, definitely have a lot of fun and would love for some more of you to hop on over, so please, uh, I'll put a link below. If you're not uh, ready for such a, a level of commitment, feel free to join for only 99 cents a month, a YouTube membership, which will get you a beautiful waffle badge in the comment section, as well as a notification on my phone whenever you make a comment. Uh, and also, and this was probably the most premium part of it, is access to four amazing, uh, unique, man alone channel only YouTube emojis uh, featuring, for instance, a Gene Hackman emoji. Um, and also, uh, I'm going to be putting out some shorter videos, like five minute uh, videos that are for uh, members and subscribers only, uh, kind of a, a sort of solo player engine type uh, weekly news story where I will randomly generate the headlines and even feature the members uh, uh, subscribers handle. So uh, for five dollars a month, you can have the platinum level, uh, all inclusive resort level man alone membership. But uh, I leave it to you. I also want to shout out to Tower House Creative. Thank you for sending me the Newell dice. I think it's called Newell. Maybe I was reading it upside down. Maybe it's Inu. Anyways, the only other word I know that has two U's in it like that is uh, Jewel, like the vape. And Urdvork. Um, these are Newell dice are 2d6 insight dice to find what lies in the heart of an NPC or to appear in the minds of monsters to expand encounters. So like a lot of Tower House stuff, uh, like the Fate Mill is is the Fate Mill itself is a friend of the channel, uh, as well as the Dyadic D20, Bell Whispers, Solo RPG Generator. These are tools that when you first pick them up, you go, okay, so... And then, like, the more you use them, is this camera crooked? It's killing me. Uh, the more you use them, the more you're like, okay, yeah, this is actually pretty awesome. Don't get dizzy. Just relax. I want to relax. Okay. Um, the Newell has these um, uh, different six different symbols. It's 2D6, for instance, right here. I got a wing and a heart. And then you can open up the Newell pamphlet here, and you can read the meaning of those. For instance, the wing means flighty or fearful. Uh, but it could mean things like flying or speed. Um, and then the heart is friendly, welcoming, or could mean HP. The really cool part, though, is it has them all listed out here. And you could look up all the different combinations. So, for instance, the wing and the heart would say, uh, fearful or flighty, but seems good-natured uh, and friendly. Will flee if any aggression is sensed. 
uh, I don't know what it is, but Tower House Creative does a really good job of capturing a lot with a little, and these dice, uh, uh, these dice are no different. We're gonna try to use these today on the playthrough, um, and I am really enjoying them. But the reason I want you to know about them now is because these are a limited run um, that he is doing. If they get uh, some some good interest, they'll do a larger run. Uh, but if not, there's only 250 sets available. I don't know how many are left, but I will tag it below the Etsy shop. So pick up a set of those. Uh, everything I've gotten um, from them is excellent. So Tower House Creative, these are the Newell dice. Have some fun. Um, the last thing outside of gameplay that I just want to report is that my laminator that I found and was really excited about and bought all this lamination paper didn't work. I forgot that the reason it was deep in storage is because the heat component worked, but not the motor. So I tried to iron a laminator sheet with a like a clothes iron. And I don't know how well you could see that, but that just looks that's that right that's like a deflated raft or like a, this is like a what what someone's butt looks like right when they get out of a swimming pool so i'll keep that out of view so it doesn't harm anybody um we're playing cyborg this is the second part of two-part video playthrough and we're using some of the tools that we got uh the location maps as well as these handy dandy little character sheets which i'm really enjoying uh, we did roll up uh some info so i'm a guy named viff now i did toggle it a little bit um because what i realize is that if you generate a punk in cyborg and this is true in work board too uh, sometimes you really kind of get scammed a little bit in that you don't get some of the other features uh that you'd get from selecting a class so i'm gonna honor the um, things that I got uh, with a little bit of changes. So the first thing is I, I set my my uh, class to discharge uh, corp killer, and I'm going to uh, roll on the tables for that. Uh, first of all, it's I, I rolled my abilities. Um, I'm going to keep my strength at zero. Agility was at negative one. I'm going to put that to zero because it doesn't really make sense to me to have somebody who was like a contract uh, henchman to be negative one for that. A zero for presence. I am basically have a zero for everything and gave myself a two for toughness because two is going to be used with a D8 to determine HP. And I think we need to give ourselves a little bit of a leg up HP. <laughs> All right, uh, you know, so I'm going to keep what I had then and give myself a six. Uh, it was supposed to be D8 plus two, but that would uh, actually lower my HP. So we'll stick with what I had. Uh, I have 70 creds and I owe 6,000. Um, I took something from my employer when I left the force. This is a D6 roll here. And that's a three, my toughness plus five hand grenades and five flashbangs. You throw grenades with minus two difficulty. That's another uh, feature of um, the Discharge Corp Killer is I get a minus one on any ranged uh, auto fire tests. And uh, I got three D6 plus two for toughness. Oh. Right. Okay. So I, okay. So I thought that my toughness was one D eight. Uh, HP is toughness. Plus, okay. No, no, no. That makes sense. So toughness plus D eight. So that'd be two. Okay, fine. Um, and then no nano, no apps, uh, armor is D four plus one. So, um, if I don't avoid an attack, then I will be able to roll d4, add one, and take that off of the um, the amount that I'm hit for. Uh, let's see, my deployment. What was my deployment when I was a corp uh, henchman? Number one, I was in urban infiltration in Psy Central, and I know that area well. That will probably be useful. 
Um, D2 glitches. I got that. So, okay. Uh, so all I have to add then is that I've got uh, toughness plus five. So seven flashbangs. Oh, seven hand grenades and five flashbangs. Wow, that'll be nice. That'll be really nice, especially solo playing because hand grenades tend to level the playing field. Five flashbangs. Okay, this looks good for a solo uh, loadout here. I think I could probably do something. I think that this collapsible ladder is actually Cybertech. Um, in fact, I will put it there because my uh, my encumbrance is strength plus eight, so that would be eight items. Um, and I'm going to count the. I'm assuming that like those hand grenades and flashbangs uh, are both one item apiece. Uh, I don't care too much about encumbrance. Never have. Oh, by the way, I've been reading these uh, two books. Regrettably, it's only two books. And they're they're sort of novellas, and they're they're called uh, um, "I Go by Night" and "Last Train to Perdition," and they're by Robert McCammon, and they're about a like half turn vampire cowboy bounty hunter, and they're awesome. So please check those out. I don't know if any of you read. To remind everybody, um, I don't know if any of you read. Uh, it's a hobby for intellectually gifted individuals. Uh, Adra, a bureaucrat who kind of wanted to get out of the game, uh, hooked me up with this job that um, I have to go into a sewer for that has some nano-infested algae in Sparta. And Svart House, Sparta, um, is... It's to the northwest, I know. Let's see if we can get the map here. Uh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Okay, so uh, we'll have to go through this little thoroughfare here, and Sparta is going to be right there. Um, there's going to be a lot of people around. There's a street gang running security. It's kind of chilly in there, and there's a ghost that's stuck in a loop somewhere attacking anyone who enters its vicinity. We'll keep an eye out for that. Um, and we're looking for an important power source. We do that. We get some cyber tech that uh, Adra will pay us for. So I'm actually um, going, I was like, should I use solitary defilement? Should I? Yeah. I think what we're going to do is we're just going to try to wing it uh, as long as we can here. We might refer to those things if we need a little bit more. But we could use these tools right here. Um, and... We'll also, uh, let's get some D20s. Let's rock some D20s here. Um, the, we'll try, this also came with the Newell dice. Thank you very much, Elton. Really appreciate that. Um, what, what I think I'm going to do is, now, I normally wouldn't choose these in advance if I was playing uh, solo off camera, but just to keep things kind of flowing here. I was thinking like the path I would have to take, I would take like some back alleys to get to Sparta. Then I would, you know, maybe stop in a dive bar and then it's in the sewer. So we have a sewer hideout and a nightclub and we can generate those rooms. Uh, Cause again, it's going to be sort of this underground rave and everything. So we could generate those rooms. Maybe we'll refer to um, solo work or solitary defilement if we need to, but why not just try to go on just good old instinct. What do you say? Um, this one might be good. I'll keep it open to room descriptors. That might be good because we'll be able to label each of these rooms. Okay. Um, all right. So basically, I'm going to be on my way here. Uh, you know, uh, Adra gave me the information. No time better than the president. It's always night here. So I'm going to start going down the alley and we're going to we're going to head this way and right here in the corner uh in this labyrinthian alley there is 1d6 3 a parked van uh covered by a tarp the home of nanomancer gearhead who is terrorizing the area with nano controlled enhanced rats and geckos 
Okay, so basically, we'll say that this uh, this guy's got this weirdo creeper van uh, right here, and that I need to proceed up and out this way, and so this van is really parked uh, right where I need to get through. And so I'm going to approach this guy, and I'm going to, seeing that I can't get around it, I'm going to say, can you move your van? And let's see, because I, I don't know anything about this guy. Um, and so we got money bag and uh, a speech bubble. So three and a five. So that's bribery bargaining and talk diplomatic. I could tell you where this is going to go and maybe convinced to stay for a bribe, not reliable unless paid well. Okay, so stay or go, whatever. And so he comes out and... Uh, this guy's name, let's go with the little D66 name generator here. This here fella is named 15. Uh, oh, well, one, it is Cord 52 Cord Shade. And he says, Well, that see, that's the thing, man. You know, everybody needs me to do this and do that. And I'm an artist, you know, and I look, he's got like a little rat maybe in the uh, in the front pocket of his shirt. He feeds like a little dried macaroni to it. And the rat looks like it has cybernetic augmentation. Uh, And so says, you know, so um, the the thing is that um, I, you know, to drive this car, it costs money and I've got to put uh, the fuel into it and I've got to, well, I've got to spend precious kilocalories booting up the van and I'm just very tired of hearing this guy and so um, I say, look, you need to move it right now. I think I'm going to try to... Um, uh, I think I'll try to do a presence. Do, 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 do. Yeah, let's do a presence check here. Um, and we'll say that this is a probably a difficult, uh, probably a difficult check uh, because it seems like he is setting this up here for a reason. And so he's not going to be very. So we got to roll higher than 14. And we get a four. So he says, yeah, I'm not going to move, man. Um, but you can you can get me to move aside. And we'll do a times 10 here. You can get me to move aside for 50 creds. Now, I definitely don't want to give this guy 50 creds. Um, but let's see. Uh, I'm going to check right now. Give me a pause so I could check uh, to see if we can generate this guy really quick. Okay, actually, uh, rather than generating, let's just do an NPC generator on the sci dashboard.makedata.lord.dev. Uh, and while we're at it, why don't we give ourselves a little bit of sound here? Let's see. Um, let's, we're in an alleyway. So let's give, ooh, I can't wait to, Let me put my headphones on. Let's see here. Okay, I can't hear a damn thing. Let's try that again. Um, oh, God. Oh, good. Okay, I think I have it here. Okay, so we got that, and do a little wind, maybe, we all like wind, who doesn't like wind? I could have sworn I had some like eerie oh here we go eerie street street that's an eerie street street uh, 
Okay, please hold. All right, maybe the Erie streetscape is a little too much. Um, so we'll just keep some wind here and... Uh... Okay, that's good. Anyway, <laughs> actually, that's... Well, <clears throat> we'll just keep we'll just keep this in mind to see when we uh, when we can use that. Uh, all right, let's do uh, click the reset here. So Juke, a fixer, trad punk with an interesting perfume, finds a new obsession. Currently obsessed, we're gonna say that uh, they're obsessed with nano controlled enhanced rats and geckos. Lives in the slums, tripping. So really, I just want the stats here. So we'll say that um, HP nine. Morale seven, which I don't really use. No armor, cyber deck, assault rifle with a grenade launcher, D8 automatic, uh, and grenade. Okay, this could be a tough. Uh, this could be a tough cookie. Um, but that's okay. So, um, HP nine, and morale seven, and no armor, and then has a D8A. Uh, and has a, a D8A automatic rifle and a D6 grenade. Uh, has a nice fake ID and can fake an alarm or location to a triggered alarm. Fine, good, love it. Um, so uh, obviously that wasn't uh, able to work. And so I'll say, uh, you know what? Actually, uh, I'm just gonna go in another direction. And um, what's this? Juke says, oh, man, you know what? Actually, now that I had to explain this to you, you got to pay the fee for information. And he sort of gets right in my face. And so I'm going to sort of nod very sort of uh, un, un, um, with like very casually just so that I can get a little bit of a drop here and I'm going to go ahead and do a straight up um, I'm going to open up with I've got no time to waste I'm going to open up with a punch to the foch hit a 15 that's definitely going to hit um, and once we once we do that We don't have a crit. I guess. Um, I guess uh, uh, fists were. Uh, I thought that fists were just uh, like something in in Merkborg, which was like I think a D four. Um, but if we look at weapons on fifty eight, it should be able to tell us. Okay, weapons D twelve. You also begin with one of these. Um, Broken bottle is D3. So, you know, I guess if a broken bottle is D3, then I'll just do a uh, D2. I think that's fair for melee in the interest of time. Uh, please don't try to tell me that I do not have, in my moment of greatest need, my special edition Merkborg uh, coins. I'm going to find them. Ooh, Nelly, they were in front of me the whole time. I got the treasure trove here. Okay, I was about to use my uh, World Eaters coin. Or maybe it was Black Legion. Anyways, uh, we're going to use the Merc Borg uh, two D2 here. And uh, go ahead and plug your ears. Uh, two. So we're going to take two off of this uh, jerk wad. Yeah, let's get... Let's get some, um, now just so you know, I'm gonna play as long as I can until I have to go to work. <laughs> Cause I have to go to work. Um, get that, like that. Um, too bad we can't, uh, I still want cyborg style, uh, these little wooden uh, figurines here. All right, this looks good. Ooh, there's another nice uh, D2. 
I like this one. Disaster, disease, death, destruction. We'll leave that out just in case. Oh, how could I not use this one? That's one of the coolest looking. All right. Um, I also have my, I don't remember where I got this, but this is a, if you ever need anything, now that Solitary Defilement had um, options for like drawing cards. And this is like this cool set I got uh, to, now obviously it doesn't, you know, it's not like a real deck where you pull an ace and then the ace is in the discard pile, but it does a trick in a pinch. Okay, so uh, we'll take two off this guy, and uh, then he will um, hit back. And let's say, let's see here. So basically, uh, what what you know, because it's only me rolling in in cyborg as it is Morkborg. Um, I will roll agility to uh, sort of attempt to get out of the way, and it's usually a DR12. And if I fail that, I'll roll uh, armor if need be. Let's uh, let's clear the area a little bit here. Okay, I guess I'll keep this Caltrops. Keep that. So we will do a d20, roll over 12, 13. So uh, hmm. So my, yeah, so that was my check. So I definitely uh, uh, dodged that. So I'm, I am going to uh, take a step back now. And I'm going to use um, my pulse rifle, uh, which is a D10, and it's automatic. And automatic's kind of fun. What you do is you test agility DR12 to hit, and hits allow another attack. So if I succeed, I will roll another attack. And then because I'm a, a corp killer, I have uh, a my difficulty rating goes to 11 with attacks. So I'm going to go ahead and try to... Hmm, well, it really doesn't matter because my agility, strength, presence, it's all zeros. So, uh, yeah, we'll try auto fire, test agility, DR11 to hit, and 13. So we do hit with that. And the one thing that I'm not certain about is what, um, let's see here. So I I hit I hit this guy and I always forget this. Uh, I'm I'm pretty sure that it's just predetermined for each. Oh, by the way, I found this to be the ghost. If we get under to the sewer, um, I thought it was page. Oh, what am I doing? Um, page fifty. There it was. Uh, so pulse rifle. Oh, pulse rifle is D10 a damage. What the hell? What am I thinking? That was right there. Uh, so that will do a D10 damage. Uh, we just use this uh, seven, and that is automatic. And so I am going to roll again. But I actually think that this guy's morale. Um, the lone enemy has one third HP left, which is just took him down from a nine to a two. And um, so we're rolling two D six to see if we roll over the enemy's morale, which is seven. And uh, well, I guess I didn't roll over the enemy's morale. Uh, it definitely, it does not say equal to or over. So I guess we'll, uh, we will allow him. So he says, you son of a... B and he pulls out from his pocket um, his rifle and tries to take a pulse shot. I don't know how you have a rifle in a pocket. Um, but he... So we're going to roll uh, once again for agility check 12 or over 10. So he does try to hit me. 
and it's a d4 plus one defense so two three defense and so he's going to hit me with a d8 rifle two so that renders no attack it's back to me i'm going to walk up to this guy with a gun butt i'm going to lower the difficulty to eight because i'm right in his face and i'm going to say here's my here's here's your payment keep the tax and we'll put the difficulty down to an eight and we rolled a one how embarrassing so if we roll a one that means that i roll a 1d6 i got a four so that means that uh, i misfire and my weapon breaks great so my pulse rifle is currently broken and he is going to do the same and attempt a to kick one of my shins and he misses that uh, but he does nip me a bit i fall on him and at this point we're gonna say yeah i'll do a melee attack again uh i'm right on top of him now so i think it'll be a six difficulty and i roll a five what a disgusting embarrassing fight um, we'll let him respond. His, his, the butt of his hand is up in my chin. This was not how I was expecting to begin this journey. He rolls a 10 that won't, will not do it. Uh, I come back with a 19. I knock his lights out and my pulse rifle is broken. Um, but luckily it looks like we have a rifle that works just as good. So I throw the bloody rifle to the side and I have now a D8A rifle with uh, um, D6 grenades, five grenades. So I think this is going to actually take up two slots now because this means I have 12 grenades. So because uh, I'm going to count hand grenades as the same ones uh, to ammo the grenade launcher. So we'll say hand grenades times six, hand grenades times six. And this is an auto rifle with uh grenade uh i'm going to search inside of this uh creepy van i'm going to quickly like i don't know what do you pray to in this game the internet and let's see if there is anything that can determine like what uh if there's anything inside you know what this might be a good time to grab silent terry or solo work one second Okay, I think I could use solitary defilement to kind of use the uh, verb and noun oracles to see like what's going on inside the van. Uh, but also there is this pocket lint uh, D66 list in the front of the book, which is like a scavenging kind of loot sort of D66 list. So let's roll on that first um, and just see if there's anything that we found. But I did also remember, or I guess I remember that I forgot, that we have to do miserable headlines. Um, how we'll do this, I think, is um, I will keep like a threat counter. And when the threat counter gets to six, so like any time that anything happens where I'm like infiltrating someplace or somebody sees me or anything, when it gets to six, I will then roll a miserable headline. We'll do a D12. And for miserable headlines, usually um, you roll these each midnight. So I guess I'll also raise the threat counter if I hit a midnight. Uh, and then you roll whatever level of miserable headline. Um, so, for instance, if you want it to happen constantly in the game, you'd roll a d4, which I'm almost wondering if I do since this is just like a short little solo play. Yeah, actually I do. So I will roll a... Uh, a d4 every night and if it lands on one which aptly is disaster here um, then we'll roll a d66 for a miserable headline but we'll roll that when a threat counter gets to six so i'll use this because it's sort of a distinct die to represent my threat counter and we'll say that uh, just to start off i'll advance it to two and when it hits six we'll roll it again but i want to roll at the beginning of the game uh, just to see if there's any miserable headlines right now and what do you know there is? And so D66, one, three, um, the 616 under siege. Police and C-Corps lay siege to the 616 Legion worshipers. 
of a nameless disc-like deity, the cult activates sleeper agents who begin killing citizens at random, causing mass panic. Okay, cool. So there is going to be uh, sleeper agents who begin killing citizens at random. And it looks like our night just got more interesting because this is going to be causing mass panic. Lovely. Lovely. Okay. So let's just make some space here. All right. Um, where can I keep this so that I remember? I'll keep it right there. Very good. Okay. So let's see what's going on. Uh, we, we open the van. Is the back door of the van uh, uh, locked? Let's find that out first. Yes, uh, it is locked, but uh, it won't be that difficult to open it. Um, so I guess I'll use, uh, let's see. I don't have to get too fancy here. Um, I guess I'm just going to, uh, use, I got, I'm going to use my, my strength to try and open it up. And, um, I'm just going to kind of try to pull the doors, uh, as strongly as possible. And because the Oracle says yes, but we'll say that it's an easy task. We'll give it uh, a difficulty rating of eight. Yeah, that'll do. And a five. So I am not able to open the van. Uh, is a window down? Am I able to reach in and grab anything? Uh, maybe. And, uh, okay, so we'll say maybe I could. Uh, but if I do that, I would have to do it at the expense of raising the threat meter, which obviously I'm an adrenaline junkie, so I will do that. And now we'll roll on the D66 um, to see... I need more room. Um, we'll roll the D66 to see what uh, what we can snatch out of the side window here. All right, one, three, nothing. And I guess just for uh, poops and giggles, we'll roll on the, the D100 prompt oracle. I'll use my uh, Tower House Creative Dyadic D20 dice for that. Um, and we'll roll a D100. And so to roll a D100 there, you use the black die for tens and the reds for ones. Um, so for instance, the result of four on black and three on red is 43. Zeros are zeros, not 10, and a roll of zero, zero is 100. Okay. So <clears throat> we'll say that is 77. Uh, perpetuate, what is being perpetuated by this van? Is this van perpetuating oppression? 74. Did I just roll 74 twice? Is that possible? No. Um, perpetuating nightmares. Yes, I would say it's a very creepy van that you don't want to see riding down the road. And I get a shiver up uh, the, the nape of my neck and I say, let me move on from this van. <clears throat> Here's something interesting, though. And uh, if, if this is a yes, it's going to complicate our game potentially very much. Does this van run? Am I able to operate it? Yes, but you can't get inside. Okay. Um, okay, so what we'll say is for now, I'm just going to bypass uh, this van. And in the alleyway, uh, as we keep proceeding up, like right through here, there's like a little door right here. And an unmarked door leads to, we'll roll a D6 for that. One, a small room with a ladder down into the sewers. Perfect. Okay, that's where we're trying to head. So we go into this little uh, room right here. <clears throat> and surprisingly, when I get down there, I find myself in a literal dive bar. Um, and, and wouldn't you know it, <clears throat> let's see, uh, it, this place is for a front for an unlicensed backroom cyber augmented kill matches rumored to be rigged. <clears throat> oh, this is great. So I could be like participating in a blood sport here. So what I'll say is I've come down the sewer right here and I hear a bunch of people talking. Actually, I think let's see if I can generate a, a nice bar ambiance. Um, let's do, there we go. Did that do anything for me? I wonder if I, I have, uh, 
my headphones. Let me see. All right, I'm going to pause to make sure this music's working correctly. Okay, we're in business here. Um, so uh, let's get a little crowd. There we go. And uh, no, I don't want that too loud. A little bit of that. Uh, how about some rhythm? Uh, too intense. Except it doesn't show any audio capture happening. Uh, so I'm imagining on your side, you can't hear anything, which is great. There we go. Okay. Uh, so I will I get down and way too much. Uh, of a door opening there that is a very intense opening i'm trying to find out if i could put any sort of uh music here in the background and it's uh, too much too much of a waste of time we'll come back to it um okay so <clears throat> i walk down the hallway here and i enter this room and uh I'm wondering, there's a section here called data. Let's see. Um, which has a lot of nice generators in it. And location, level bar, center in, security, complication, location features. Uh, so a dis this is a D10. So we'll say a distinctive feature. Roll the black and the red. Uh, the zeros are 10. OK, so we'll, we'll just say, oh, oh, well, we're rolling the, bl the black or the red. Sorry, I'm making things more complicated for myself by reading off of a card on how to roll a D10, which I already know how to do. Okay, so the distinctive feature is it's under renovation, paint bucket, scaffolding, and everything spreading around. Great, that's really nice when an underground sewer bar has enough, uh, like their, their business is doing well enough that they can um, renovate. Because usually with places like that, they just kind of take what they can get. And so I think it's, maybe they have that show Bar Rescue come in, like, look at this, you're in a sewer. Uh, but it has a hidden feature as well of five, uh, a small data node that leads into low-res virtual hellscape of a dying world. A terrible monster guards a large credit stash. Okay, so I'll let you know if I'm going to go and plug into that node. Uh, and it has an additional danger uh, for tech use has a 50% chance of triggering an electrical fire. So if I did want to use uh, that to, and you know, maybe it has this, uh, it says that this place is an unlicensed uh, backroom, has backroom kill matches. Maybe that could be like a, uh, a virtual sort of, um, a virtual, how would I say this? Combat, blood sport. Um, and as I walk in, I attract the, somebody looks over at me, nothing too big, but I can see, you know, I'm, a, I'm a, an accomplished uh, mercenary. And so I know when somebody is glancing over at me and this individual is, this will be fun. Um, this individual is going to be D, a mimic, so a mime, to two, um, that has lace trimmings. This is the future, ladies and gentlemen. So a very sexy mime with lace trimmings, 21, uh, who is a developer, <laughs> a software developer, okay, and is obsessed with seven, eight, uh, oh wait, 87, um, 
vintage army jackets. This is the most unique human being that has ever lived. And they have a, a quirk, don't you know? Outlines 1 to 10, 9. Okay. Um, we'll just use that. So the, the quirk here is that they giggle inappropriately. Wow, match made in heaven. Although they're not allowed, if they are a mime, they're not allowed to... Um, 18... And they really want self-transformation. <laughs> okay. Uh, what is this individual's name? Just so that I know. Um, they look like they know something. And so I walk up to them. And this is this is going to be the most ridiculous solo uh, scenario I've ever gotten myself into right now. I'm about to have a conversation with a mime. Okay, let's do it. Uh, their name, I say, uh, you got a name? And I walk over to them. And they say, uh, their name is... Six for Zenit, uh, and they sort of spell out Zenit, and I say Zenit. That's a nice name. Um, and I order a drink, and as the drink's coming over, I say, uh, you, "You come to this place often?" And Zenit, um, let's see. This is fun because this mime is basically doing what solo play does. Is oh, actually, let's use the. Uh, NPC dice here. So three, two, um, let's do flighty bribery, two, three. Uh, maybe convinced to stay for a bribe, not reliable and less paid. Okay, so I say, they look like they're about to go, and I say, hey, can I interest you in a drink? And they give me a very, uh, what do they say? Can I, yes, but, um, I have to buy them like a mime drink. It can't be a real drink. So I have to like take fake money out of my pocket and say bartender. And then I put the money down and then I kind of grab it and I shake it a little and I hand it to her and she takes a sip and smiles and wiggles her shoulders a little bit. Zen it. And I say, Zen it, you know, um, are, are, do you come to this place uh, often? You know, the, the greatest pickup line. Uh, yes, they do, but uh, they don't uh, they don't say it. They, they kind of give a bunch of facial expressions to indicate like, yeah, this old this old dump, you know, they wag their head. Uh, I wish I could find somewhere better, but it's always the underground sewer bar for me. Um, and I say, Zenit, I am looking for something a little more exciting than this. I'm looking for a, a rave. You know where I can find that? And Zenit nods. And I say, where do I have to go? What do I have to do to find that? Let's just use the... Sixty-seven. Commit. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Please, the noun here is crucial. <laughs> Uh, 97 skyscraper commit skyscraper okay so we'll, we'll say skyscraper is somebody tall so the tallest person in the room so I'm going to look out at the room and let's say that I do see a very tall uh, a man standing in the corner by a door uh, a latch door and got his arms crossed and uh, uh, mirror shades on and I'm like okay clearly this guy is a bouncer and I say thank you Zenit and then I pull out some more fake credits and I say uh, bartender who is not there because I'm mimicking this I say drinks on me all night and uh, Zenit gives me like uh, such like oh my gosh thank you so much uh, sort of expression with face and body language very nice. Um, if I keep playing this for 25 more sessions, maybe Zenit and I can have some mimed children. Okay, so I walk over, and what do you know that this man uh, has the name tag on, and that name tag says Skyscraper. And Skyscraper, uh, five, six... Talking is the best way to interact. 
<laughs> oh, this is so fun. Talking is the best way to interact. They will share information you don't expect because they are just so helpful. And so I say, uh, hi, is your name Skyscraper? And a big smile comes across his face. And he says, yeah, that's me. And I say, Skyscraper, I'm looking for a party. Do you know where that is? And he says, oh, my gosh, yes. You've got to go to the secret rave down in the sewers. And I say, well, how do I get there? And he says, well, you just go through this door right here. And I say, gee, thanks. Do, you, do I have to pay a fee? And he says, no, you seem really nice. I'm not going to give you a hard time at all. And I say, great. And I walk right past Skyscraper. And this thing that we, we totally thought was going to be maybe a combat conflict is nothing. Uh, I go right on by. But as I am about to go in, I notice on the floor of the bar that there is right at the exit. So so let's just say that, uh, you know, there's some booths right here. Here's the bar. Skyscraper is right here. And so as I'm going through into this room and there'll be a staircase down here on the floor, I notice a five, a shot of bad red juice, test toughness, DR12 or gain an infestation. Great. 17. Okay, so I did pass that. Um, although, toughness. Oh, yeah. So that should have actually been plus two. So we're good with that. Um, and as I take a last look around, just because I don't know if I'm coming back here, among the patrons, there is two. A doppel hiding among a group of goons, murdering them one by one, stacking the corpses in a bathroom stall. Great. None of my business. I'm just going to carry on. And so we're going to proceed down to the sewer here. Uh, and this sewer, we, we know that there's some nano infested algae here. But also, if we look back to our original uh, generation here, if, to recall, we're, we're looking for a piece, uh, uh, an important power source. A street gang is going to be doing security. And there's sewer tunnels with nano-infested algae in Sparta. So right away, these are nano-infested. I'm going to go ahead and increase my risk a little bit just because I'm in the danger zone now. It's pretty cold down there. And a glitching ghost is stuck somewhere attacking anyone who enters the vicinity. And so what I'm going to say is um, in addition to raising threat meter now, I'm also going to roll a – let's make a D8 – and if I roll a one on the D8, then the ghost will attack. And I actually did find a nice entry for this. Uh, if I do get into a conflict with that in an usual man alone fashion, I probably won't be able to find it right now at all. Uh, but there is a nice entry uh, for a ghost, um, like as a um, an NPC that you can have a nice uh, fight with. Uh, I swear, I swear on my mother's best shoes. Okay, ghost. Yeah, so this will be the ghost that I will uh, uh, have a conflict with if I roll a one on that D8 and we'll roll that every time I increase the threat. Okay, so I'm going through the sewer, and in addition to stuff we already know, there's algae there, uh, but this is a hideout also of three, a group of nano freaks in the lost entrance to an ancient and mostly forgotten nuke shelter. I think this nuke shelter is where this rave is going on. These nano freaks are the ones that are doing this testing, which is leading to this algae flowing through here, so I really have to uh, stay by the wall. So I would say that every room that I go into, I probably need to do an agility check and we'll make it at a 10. And um, if I if I fail that check, I get some nano infested algae in me. And I'll say as well that that is also going to be reason to roll uh, just so that this is in frame here. There's the threat meter. And if I get if I fail a uh, agility test in each room, I will roll the D8 and potentially, uh, without raising the threat meter, but I'll roll the D8 and uh, uh, if I roll a one, I'll, the ghost will start uh, pursuing me. Okay, so we'll do a DR10 to start. 
12. Very good. So no uh, able to not touch algae here in the main hallway. And we are going to, let's see. Um, let's uh, put it up to fate here. I'm going to say one to three, I'll turn left. Uh, four to six, I'll keep going straight. Four to six, so I'll keep going straight here. And same thing to the left is, uh, well, actually, to the right is, um, I don't know what to the right would be. So we want to find the nightclub. And we're going to say that, um, well, well, we'll find out. We'll, we'll, we'll let it develop. So um, I'm going to go to, screw it. You know what? I have faith in myself. We'll go to the right if it's four to six and we'll go to the left if it's one to three okay so we go to the left and to the left here is a room and this room i can take uh am i able to see inside the room maybe so we'll do a uh we'll see maybe some limited information uh from this room here so in this room in this room uh, one there is an anti nano propaganda everywhere <laughs> okay so we have these nano freaks and oh okay so this room has like all the evidence of people that are anti nano and these guys are really pro nano and so they're looking at all these pieces that um that uh, these you know anti nano people are putting up, and they're just sort of plotting their revenge. Uh, do they notice me? Uh, no, and I'm able to move on if I'd like to, um, and I think that I will. But I will note that in that room uh, are some real freaks, um, and we'll keep going. Okay, so. We don't go in that room. We're going to go here and to the right here, this room, in this room, in this room, four is a shrine dedicated to a pair of two faced AIs. Very interesting. I'm, uh, is the room open? Yes, uh, but I will have to speak to somebody at the door. So I come to the door. And there is someone um, standing there. They're sitting on a stool. Their head is sort of like, uh, they're a little bit drowsy, let's say. And I am not certain if they have noticed me. Um, but let's say that... They let's let's take a look at them and see what they look like here. So we'll say that they 41 are uh, a hex core. OK, so they love doing spells and I my character loves doing talking about rituals and 21. Uh, they have very disheveled look. OK, that's in line. And their role here is 99 a thief. Uh, okay, and I don't care about their obsession, but let's find a quirk here. Their quirk is that they scratch their facial scar, and uh, they do they notice me as I walk in, or am I able to walk by? Actually, I think that we'll do a check on that. Uh, I'll do a presence, and since they look a little bit, uh, sorry, since they look a little bit sleepy, we'll say that uh, difficulty rating 10. 14, so I am able to sneak by them. And I see this shrine dedicated to this pair of two-faced AIs. And uh, let's see, is there anything in the room? Let me actually uh, do a presence check again. We'll do DR8 to see if there's I can see anything around. Uh, 18, indeed I can. And so let's do a quick 66 to see if I can find anything just lying around. Uh, 16, nothing. <laughs> Again, all right, that's fine. So I walk in and uh, I see this two-faced AI and there's a placard in front of it. 
and this placard has a message on it and that message is about 36 uh ghost oh man okay so this is this sort of uh shrine that this this placard says um those who do not worship the two-faced construct will be made into a ghost by a ghost. So I'm going ahead to raise the threat meter a little bit. This room is uh, kind of eerie, kind of creepy. I'm going to go ahead and back myself out of it and uh, DR8 to see if I can get past this guy again without uh, arousing his suspicions, and seven. So he does wake up, and let's see, what is his uh, disposition here? Light flight. Okay, so maybe this dude just runs the hell out of there. Um, will flee if sighted, elusive and afraid. And so he goes, ah, ah! Um, but he is a thief, so I do have to ask, um, uh, did this guy steal anything from me? You know, what a, what a distraction to pretend that you're terrified and run away. So let me see if I presence test DR 10 and 11. So did not steal anything from me, legitimately afraid, ran down the hallway. But however, I will say that just, you know, yelling and screaming, that's definitely going to raise my threat level a little bit. So we're going to roll. And eight. Okay, so no, um, no ghost uh, picking us up. So we're back to one. That's a little bit of relief, and we're going to continue down the hallway here. Um, and in this intersection right here, one to three, we go left. Four. So I go straight. And in uh, in this room is sort of this. Oh, we're, we have to. Um, roll i'm sorry we have to roll two agility tests because i didn't do that in the last room uh to make sure that i didn't touch any nano algae so we'll do dr10 pass 11 and then in this hallway 18 so no no advancement of the threat meter no algae uh is is clean to me i'm getting very lucky and in this room is like um some it's weird it's like uh, earth like a pile of dirt that somehow fell through the ground into the sewer and it's mixed with the disgusting sewer water and lost within this dirt is one a machete nice so we will definitely pick that up and let's see uh a machete let's see if i can just really quickly get any info on the machete maybe it's danny trejo is laying there pick me up um okay machete is d6 nice i'll take it um love love me a good melee weapon okay so um advancing onward we are going to go into this big room right here and i'm just gonna take a little pause to see if i can find another uh location generator that fits this one second okay cool so we'll actually use a dungeon room descriptor and this is what you get for not trusting the uh, solitary, uh, the supplements. Uh, they actually have a bar generator in here, which would have been nice. But the past is a past. We need to move on. So we're going to do a D20. Uh, outline is 10. Solid is 1s. And C. let's do a D12 first to see like what kind of room this even is. So this is a... Six, uh, a stairwell ladder elevator shaft. Okay, so let's just say maybe there's like a, a group of elevators here that these little dots are different elevators and they're just sort of ding, ding and they're going to a bunch of different floors. So obviously this is a hub for some sort of secretive superstructure. Uh, this room is <clears throat> uh, holographic and augmented. So there's lots of different um uh, projections happening. There's lots of different entities who are sort of giving you the uh, Hey Joe sort of thing from Blade Runner. You know, can I help you? Can I interest you? And let's go to each of them and see uh, what their dispositions are and see if we can find any information. So the first one we go to is Too Hazy. Um, and this creature is stone faced, totally neutral and non responsive, unreadable. So, okay, let's move. So, that's that one. We're not going to go there, or we'll only go there as last resort. Um, this one is uh, hazy money, is not clear if a bribe will help the situation, but may help if open them up. And so, uh, I'll say 
they'll say, hello, can I help you? And I'll say, yeah, I'm looking for a, um, a rave. And so let's do a two part Oracle here. Number one, do they have the information that I want? Um, well, let's say number one, do they ask me for a bribe for information or like a payment? Uh, maybe it depends on what the location is. And so I say, uh, can you tell me where a, uh, where I might find a really fun rave? And they say, maybe. And I would be a little more um, willing if you were to hand over some credits. And how many credits are they charging? <laughs> three credits. Uh, okay, so I deposit three credits into there. And um, they say, thank you. Um, do they give me the uh, exact answer? Maybe, but you'll, you know, it could they'll give you a definitive answer, but you really don't know like how correct the answer is. And so they say, go ahead and proceed to elevator seven, this one right here. So I take elevator seven down and I'm able to just walk right into it. And when it opens, it opens up to a room that is, ooh, that is um, neon soap. So this is very promising. Um, and we will, <clears throat> we will just make the executive decision here. This sounds very good um, that this is the nightclub, okay? And so in this nightclub, uh, there is six, a well-obscured recruitment center for fideistic transformation disguised as a nightclub lecture hall for early adopters and teen enthusiasts. Um, pause, need to look up that word. Okay. Um, uh, the doctrine that knowledge depends on faith or revelation. Okay, so it's people selling illegal uh, drugs. Got it. Yes, yes, I understand. Your recruitment center. You want to do spiritual revelation. Very cool, very cool. Thanks. I'll let you know. Um, and so I am not dressed for the event, so we'll put the threat meter up to two. And we'll say that um, I enter here and I enter, this is like a little bit of a lobby, uh, or, or I should say like a foyer and here's a coat room. Um, I don't need to check a coat and I go into this main area and maybe there's like, uh, people selling drinks here and then, you know, there's a big crowd and there's somebody named like, uh, DJ, uh, DJ, uh, Joaquin Helix and spin in the uh spin in the whatever cyber records <laughs> um and so this like little lobby area uh let's get a description of that this is a it's sterile minimalist and elegant isn't that so interesting okay um so just to reorient ourselves to what we're trying to do here we're trying to find an important power source um and there is a street gang that is going to be defending this and so uh, I'm gonna go up to this and I'm going to order a drink at the bar and that drink, it's overpriced, so we'll do times two. Uh, that's gonna cost eight credits just so that I sort of blend in and don't arouse any suspicion. And uh, I say, okay, uh, to the bartender, I say, hey, I'm looking, uh, I'm looking to talk to uh, who runs this place. And this bartender, bartender six one heart skull, some action. Uh, this person might seem friendly, but they may lash out. They will kill for friends or aggressively protect those they care about. Okay, so this is a very uh, beautiful woman who's also very capable and could uh, probably whoop my ass. And she says, who's asking? And I say, um, I just want to talk to them. I have a business proposition for them. Um, and she is going to like be cleaning some uh, cups. And she is going to say, yeah, uh, you can talk to them. But first, let's see, first, Forget, forty-four, or sorry, forty-three. Forget the street. 
forget the streets, man. The rules here are totally different, right? Because this is a street gang, right? And so she says, we're not, uh, you know, if you, if you think you know these people from the street, they're different now. They're professionalized. They run a professional operation here. So if there's any kind of bullshit that goes down, I'm going to know about it. And uh, or they're going to know and they're going to not be very friendly to you. And I say, oh, you know, understood. And so she calls somebody forward. And this person is going to be called 56 Wick. Very good. So Wick comes forward. And she says, Wick, this guy wants to go see the boss. So Wick, uh, standing there in that famous pose of all uh, casino security guards, hands folded over the front of his body, and uh, leads me, let's say, past, um, now this I have some music for, but I don't want it to be too loud. Okay, so um, this guy, Wick, which I don't know if it's Wick or if he's like uh, just a, of a language background where Vic sounds like Wick, um, but Wick or Vic is a uh, pretty, pretty cool, cool looking dude. And by that, I mean, he looks like a total nerd, like his suit fits too large. Uh, his suit is too large for him. And okay, that's enough. I never, I'm always afraid to like leave sounds on while I'm solo playing because I don't want it to be so loud that it is distracting and it's hard for me to tell the actual volume of stuff. Okay. So let's say our friend Wick is. I'm going to I'm going to roll the okay here we go so we already know his style he's just like got you know a little thing in his ear and uh you know like the little headphone who even knows if it works um 100 so he's also got war paint on uh his role is security and uh, just so we know his obsession here is that he loves uh to wear shades oh that's for sure but he's got a little bit of a quirk and that quirk is that he blinks a lot, okay? Uh -huh. So uh, let's just say Wick leads me into this room. What's the disposition here is talks, says, I don't even have to look that up. He basically says that is uh, a talk bubble and money. Wick says, okay, well, uh, how much uh, can, how much are we talking? And I suddenly realized I said I wanted to talk business. And, and so they say, uh, I say, well... Um, whatever number you can think of right now, go ahead and times that by 10. And he says, well, I'll go get the boss right away. Uh, and walks out of the room and leaves me in this room, which is uh, very extravagant. It's aristocratic. It's gaudy. It's almost embarrassing uh, that it just has no style. Like it's a person who has money but has has not come from money and so they have this sort of you know like a lottery winner uh, a a sort of um uh roman pillars in, in front of an rv kind of thing um and as i'm waiting there i'm getting a little suspicious because it has already been six minutes and nothing has happened and so I'm just going to check my weapons to just make sure that um, everything is set and nothing is suspicious, such as somebody walking in with a machete and an auto rifle, but it's just that kind of place. Uh, and then finally the door opens and in walks um, a man who does actually look like he knows what he is talking about. Um, and says it's a little bit fearful or flighty but seems good natured okay so i'm talking to this guy and uh, he says what kind of business uh, do you propose and i said uh well i'm actually very interested in a power source 
and I can see a bead of sweat roll down the side of his head. He says, power source, why would we have something like that? And I say, well, um, you know, I've just, uh, I've just heard that you might have something like that for sale. And he says, oh, and I'm suddenly have this instinct here that this is somebody who is not in charge, but is only standing there to gather information to me to pretend that they are in charge. Is this man in charge? No. <laughs> okay. So he's not in charge. And so I'm going to try to use um, toughness. Yeah, I'll, I'll use toughness. I'll use toughness to try to intimidate, and we'll do this is kind of a wimp. So we'll do dr uh, eight, and then I'll give myself plus two, uh, seven plus two nine. And so I come up to him, I grab his shirt, and I say, "I think that you don't know what you're talking about, and I'm a person that needs to talk to somebody who knows what they're talking about. So I'll tell you what. Why don't you go get?" whoever is in charge and bring them back here and I better be talking to somebody serious. And he says, yes, yes, okay, walks out of the room, walks out of the room. And I'm in this room alone again and and I am I am starting to feel like maybe I'm getting myself in over my head. Maybe I shouldn't have intimidated that guy. And um, uh, finally, I get restless and I'm gonna walk out of this room and I'm going to see what's going on. And as soon as I uh, walk out of the room, uh, the bartender who was right here says, hey, and I look over at her and she looks to the left and she says, uh, uh, to an associate of hers, she just nods and this guy runs up on me uh, and has some sort of uh, small uh, weapon, we'll say. And I'm going to see if I can... Um, oh, good. A bouncer. This is perfect. So we'll do a bouncer who has um, morale 8. Oh, sorry. That's HP 8. Morale 7. Has minus D2 armor vest and has a shock stick. This is great. Um, D4 toughness, DR12 or fall. Okay, so he's going to come up to me with a shock stick and let me do a presence check. And he's got the drop on me, so we're going to say that this is a 14 presence. And I hit a 19. Okay, so I am able to dodge this guy. And I'm going to initiate combat here because this is somebody who is coming after me. And, you know, nobody in the – well, let's say this. Um, do, do the people around me, like, notice? Is this irregular for them? Are they going to react with fear? No. And, in fact, a lot of people just, like, keep dancing slowly next to me as this guy uh, just attacked me, missed. And uh, for initiative now, let's do D1-6. Uh, or, sorry, 1-D-6. Uh, and a 3. Uh, enemy acts first. And so I will do an agility check. He recovers and does backwards sort of spinning of the shock stick again and let's roll um agility you are 12 14 i missed that he swings makes no contact and i'm actually going to uh swing with the machete which i know is kind of crazy but let's just try it out 13 beautiful so i actually um go ahead and hack um uh, let's just say one through three an arm and uh, four through six, a hand. Perfect. So I lop this guy's arm off. And that's going to be a D6 damage for four. And so I've taken this guy down to four. And I'm going to roll for morale, which needs to be over seven, six. So this guy's like, no, he's still coming at me. <laughs> okay. So good. So uh, he's down to four HP. He's got an arm that's on the ground. Uh, is he human? Yes, but clearly he's on a bunch of like combat stims or something like that. 
Uh, very good. Oh, you know what? He's minus D2 uh, armor here. So maybe I didn't take four, which is kind of wild. Uh, a one. So um, takes three damage. So he's actually down to five. And let's do initiative again. Seems to be evenly matched. One. He's going to act again. Okay, so he is, uh, is going to try to strike me again. And we'll do a DR12 agility, 16. I miss, he misses again. Very lucky uh, for me. And I'm going to, um, I'm going to make a statement here and I'm going to fire uh, my auto rifle here. I'm going to do a, uh, a straight shot, uh, DR12, 9, uh, minus 1, maybe 10. Mm, I miss, okay? But that does get the attention of people. And among the guests, there is three. A small Roadrunner clan getting drunk and making deals with the locals. All right, so basically that is enough to attract the attention of a Roadrunner clan. And there is going to be... Okay, one of them comes forward to fight me. And for that... Um, let's give... Okay, cool. This will be a nice little thing to add. So we'll say that this is Sasa. And Sasa, and I'm sorry if you have not played through this uh, little mission here, but Sasa uh, has HP of 7, morale of 5, minus D4, rough jacket, has throwing knives at D4, and does 2 attacks per round. Holy crap, did I make a mistake. Has 2,000 on a cred chip. So Sasa knows what uh, she is doing um and uh i'm at an hour and 18 minutes so i actually am going to stop there because my brain is fried but uh if i if i feel the the spirit we'll pick that up again we'll we'll find the results of this and see what our friend viff gets up to thank you everyone uh who followed all the way to the end and let me know what you think in the comments uh about what's going to happen next or what you think about some of the the oracle choices i made okay bye Honestly, Sasa kind of she looks like a little hot. I mean, I'm not saying like she's clearly a threat. She's got throwing knives and everything, but she's kind of cute. And she's got her own thing going. That's really attractive.